My name is Brams, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. In this video, I'll show you how to conditionally add scroll shadows to a scroll container. Take this scroll container here that has some scrollable overflow. With many operating systems using overlay scroll bars, it might not be entirely clear to the user that they can actually scroll. To improve the UX, the scroll port features shadows on the sides to indicate that you can scroll the scroll container. These scroll shadows dynamically update as you reach the startmost or endmost scroll positions. The shadows are injected onto the container elements using generated content. The before one is positioned at the top of the scroll port and the after one at the bottom. The shadow itself is created using a gradient. To animate these shadows on scroll, they fade in and fade out using a scroll timeline that tracks the scroll container. I use the name timeline here, but an anonymous one could work as well. Note that I'm reusing the same animation here, yet for the bottom shadow, I'm playing it in reverse. With this code in place, the shadows already animate. What still needs tweaking are the ranges. The top shadow should fade in as you are at the start of the scroll range, and the bottom shadow at the end of the scroll range. To achieve this, the animation range property is used. The top shadow values are simple. The animation range start is set to 1 EM and the animation range end to 2 EMs. That way, it animates over a distance of 1 EM. For the bottom shadow, it's a tad more tricky. Looking at it, the animation should start when at 2 EMs from the endmost position up to being at 1 EM from the endmost position. The endmost position is 100%. So when throwing a little calc in the mix, the values can be computed. Animation range, calc 100% minus 2M, calc 100% minus 1M. While the code already works, there is one problem with it. When the container element is not a scroll container, it still shows the shadows. Now, ideally, these shadows should only be shown when there's actual scrollable overflow. But good news. This too can be solved by scroll-driven animations. Because scroll-driven animations are only active when there is scrollable overflow, it is possible to use them as a mechanism to detect if an element can scroll or not. For this, you need the help of a CSS trick named the space toggle. As a first step to getting this to work, I added a new scroll animation to the container. The animation does nothing but setting a custom property named can scroll to a value of a single space. With scroll-driven animations only being active when there is scrollable overflow, this results in a property either existing when there is scrollable overflow or not existing at all when there is no scrollable overflow. The second part to make this work is to actually use the space toggle. Now, don't pay too much attention to the exact syntax, but notice. Depending on the can scroll custom property being declared or not, either one of visible or hidden, will be used for the visibility, which is exactly what's needed to conditionally show the shadows. To learn more about the space toggle, go check out the link that you see on the screen. So, there you have it. Scroll shadows that conditionally get shown thanks to scroll-driven animations. No blocking JavaScript was needed at all. In the next video, I'll show you how to change a visual scroll direction as you scroll. Bye. Thank you.